So, without Sancho taking leave of his wife and children, or Don Quixote of his housekeeper, they sally forth together from their village. As they make their way through the countryside, Don Quixote sees something that makes him stop in wonder. <gasps> Friend Sancho Panza, Dame Fortune is guiding our affairs. There, you see a host of enormous giants. I intend to do battle with them. Giants, where? Well, those you see there, with the long arms. But those, those aren't giants, you Christ. They're windmills. You are deceived, my friend. They are most definitely giants. But perhaps thou art afraid. If so, step aside, whilst I engage them in fierce and unequal combat. Flee not, base brutes, for it is a single knight who attacks you. Don Quixote spurs on Rocinante and charges at full gallop, attacking the first mill he comes to. As he thrusts his lance into the sail, the wind gusts with so much force that it picks up both the horse and the knight, spins them right up into the air, and drops them to the ground, knocking the breath out of them. Sancho Panza moves in to help, shouting, See you, Grace! Didn't I tell you they were windmills? Be quiet, Sancho. You, you do not understand these things. What has happened is that some great enchanter has now turned the giants into these windmills. But tell me, have you ever read of another who tilted with such extraordinary courage? No, I haven't. But that's because I can't read. But you, you definitely are, are tilting, you, you, Your Grace. Are, are you hurt? Dear Sancho, a true knight and it never complains about his wounds. They are but a small price to pay for eternal fame. If you say so. Speaking for myself, Your Grace, I'm hungry. And as I say, sorrows fade with a little bread, and all ills are good when attended with food, and hearty fare lightens care. <laughs> and well, Your Grace, I think it's time for us to eat. I have here an onion and cheese and bread. Would you like? There is nothing in the books that says knights eat. Oh. So Sancho opens the saddlebags and begins to eat alone savoring each mouthful and he raises a wine skin into the air and drinks with much gusto tilting his head back as if he were studying the stars it seems to him that it is not hard work but sheer pleasure to go around seeking squirely adventures even if they can be a bit dangerous